All right, guys, we're going to start mounting our ignition coil here and doing a, a spec uh, called air gap. So I'm going to focus in this area right here. First thing I want you to notice here is we got these magnets here. And what we don't want to do is be trying to, I'm going to do this wrong. I don't want to be trying to mess with this to where it's sucking down. I could scratch it I, because I'm, I'm going to be tightening the coil this way and I don't want to drag it across the magnets. If this, if this were to be sitting up here, I'd be dragging this down. So one thing you'll see is like this coil's been on and off so many times. Do you see where this this piece of metal is is basically folding away? Yeah. These are called the laminations of the coil and that's not good. When we tighten this up, it's gonna tighten down, but those are all individual little stacks and uh, we don't wanna be dragging that across the flywheel, okay? So what I wanna do to do this, uh, this procedure is I wanna go ahead and get my magnets out of the way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mounting bolts and I'm gonna go ahead and put them in place. Now, this mounting bolt serves as a dual purpose on this one to where it's actually part of the recoil and you'll notice it's a pretty equal triangle. If you accidentally put it over here, you'd be able to bolt this down, but then when you put your fuel tank and recoil on, it's gonna be wrong. So getting it in the right place is important. Oh, I, I skipped one other thing I wanna make a note of. <clears throat> in our training module, do you remember how they made a big deal about saying uh, to mount the lead up? Uh -huh. Okay, so you could see that this will physically bolt both ways. You could take this coil, and I could bend this on here, but what's happening in this wire right now? I'm stressing it. Oh, I'm stressing it like crazy, right? And the lead coil is going to be towards the heat. And be towards the heat, okay. Now, when I go in this direction, do you see how it just naturally falls really nice to where the spark plug would be? Yeah. So there's a good clue or a good indication of, of how that should be mounted. I'm going to take, and I'm just going to get these loose. So it's just barely snug on here. Do the same here. These are a six by one bolt, and we've been seeing that nine foot pounds, pretty consistent here. Yep. Now what I want to do is I want these loose enough that they'll move on the slots. So you can see here the slotted area. Why don't we zoom in here? Oh, beautiful. So this right here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to set the air gap to 16 thousandths of an inch. Okay, we have, uh, what do we say in the manual, 8 to 20? 8 to 20. 8 to 20 thousandths of filler gauges. Now ideally, I'm going to take advantage of the couple of people that I have here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use two filler gauges, one on each side, to come up with my 16 thousandths. Okay? The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have, I'm going to go ahead and have uh, Art right now rotate the flywheel. Uh, yep, that direction. Other way, I'm sorry. Okay, right there. Back up a little. Back up. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Okay, I'm taking advantage of the magnets now. Have sucked the... Can you see how the magnets are sucking the coil against the feeler gauges? Yep. Okay, so then what I'll do is I'll take and I'll just apply a little bit of pressure. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snug these down. You can stay right there. I'm going to snug these down so that when I pull the filler gauges out, go ahead and uh, zoom in here. And can you see our gap now? Yeah, I can see it in there. Oh, yeah. So now we're at, at 16 thousandths. But I want to make one recommendation. I would definitely keep your filler gauge in there when you go to, to torque it because as I torque this, there's a possibility that I might suck the coil in and alter that specification. No matter what, when I go ahead and torque this, see how I stuck my thumb up there? Mm -hmm. I keep doing that, don't I? Yep. Every time, okay? Torque so, that. yeah, I want to try that every single time. Now, I can go ahead and pull my filler gauge out and you can see here that I'm at that right air gap and that is how you do the uh, ignition coil air gap. One last little thing we have to do to this is go ahead and put our uh, connector on. A great product when dealing a great product when dealing with electrical connections is dielectric grease. We're going to be covering this in the future as well, but we could just take a little bit of this here and put that on here, and that helps prevent corrosion along with other things. It's not grease, it's dielectric grease. Oops. So I'm good and firm on there. One last thing we talked about earlier was making sure that we were in our clip. and. Uh, for right now, we have, we're going to set the motor in the right position to do one last service, and that's a, a valve adjustment. And one thing you'll notice about this Honda small engine here, see if you can zoom in on this little arrow here. Let 
right there. Okay, that arrow represents on that stud top dead center. So it's really super handy if you're doing just a valve clearance and you don't want to pull the whole engine apart. We can verify that that arrow is pointing to that. If we were, you probably couldn't see it in the video, but if we were to look down, why don't you try and, why don't you try and aim right there and we'll just see if this works. Can you see the piston moving up and down here? Hold on, just you stop, you focus. So there's, there's the top of the piston moving up and down. Well, when I get that arrow pointed, it's right there. Watch when I go off a little bit, okay? See when I go off, the piston's dropping in either way. So we wanna set that arrow right at top dead center. And then another nice thing that'll help us not have to mess around with it so much is we put the properly gap spark plug in. We'd, uh, you know, or put a new one in and gap it properly. But for right now, we can go ahead and set this guy in here. And uh, we would torque that to spec, uh, put our cap on. We could put dielectric grease on the cap too, no problems there. And then we don't have to worry about anything getting inside the engine.